John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. It says, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on me, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. You know, I, I swapped with Kenneth Sunday's Redemption's Prayer. I forgot it was for the July week. But you know, the freedom that we know today was earned at our price. It didn't come free. We strive every day of our lives for this country freedoms that we richly deserve. If you go back and you remember the September 11th, you think of the world of Paris and freedom as we know it now, then changed that. As we watch the people running out of those buildings, the firefighters running in. You know, it, it, it amazes me that many people would be paid to all those other things. But our freedom doesn't hit that thing. So many times in our life, things have come that we, we, we thank people for the freedom that we have. One of the greatest things I ever remember in my life walking up the deserts of Hawaii and looking up at the sky and seeing a hair. Three airplanes. They usually flew over our camp going into Hawaii. They'd always fly to a time. But this day, there were three of them. One of the planes had been shot down. I don't know who was flying that out. But every time I look up in the sky, I thank like the Lord for that thing. I don't know the circumstances, but he can. He can home. So many times in our life, things don't come free. Jesus Christ paid the price on the cross for our freedom. You know, we make day to day cops price paid. At what was the price the price paid? We couldn't just celebrate this Fourth of July. Right. As Abraham Lincoln said, our forefathers brought forth on this con a new nation, saved and delivered, dedicated to the opposition. We've got to remember that in the time that we live. As the ushers come forward to take up the morning on, let's pray. Our most heavenly gracious Father, we are indeed thankful for this day, this weekend that we celebrate the 4th of July. We thank both our forefathers. They brought forth on our country. When they signed the Declaration of Independence, they wanted God to be part of this country. We've got people nowadays that thank them. Government church should be separate. <coughs> but we know, uh, just picking out our bills out of our wallet, that in God we trust. And this government will always survive as long as we trust in God. And as long as we put our faith in Jesus Christ, that we might always do what you have us to do. Watch over us, protect us, guide us, and direct us in coming years, that we might always thank you. I ask in the precious name of Jesus. <laughs>
Brother John is something I am proud of being American. But Lord, I'm proud to be a Christian. And Lord, in these last days, I pray, Father, that we could stand tried and true. And Lord, that we walk the walk and talk the talk. And Lord, we have the faith to show others that we're not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God and the salvation. And all that believe it, first to the Jew, and then all to, also to the Greek. And Lord, I pray, Father, you help us this morning. As we look into your word, Lord, give us that to stand in need of. We'll praise you, Father, for it all. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Seems last week when we were on vacation, we went to several different areas around Myrtle Beach. Things that used to be there were no longer there. Across from the Grand Strand, there on Highway 17, right there on Kingsway Boulevard, was a big mall. The mall's gone. It's Parking on that. Some shops that we used to go to have been closed down. There was a Burger King that we used to grab breakfast at sometimes. It's been closed down. There was a Taco Bell closed down. There was a Chinese restaurant closed down. There were some. Uh, There's a place I don't know if you've ever been to North Myrtle Beach called Barefoot Landing. It's just about uh, maybe half of what it used to be. A lot of shops have closed down. As you walk up the sidewalk, you can see signs in the windows that say out of business. As you drive down the Grand Strand, there'd be signs in the windows of those stores out of business. There'd be signs of these restaurants that just said empty out of business. As we come back with the young people from Dollywood yesterday, uh, Brother Josh and I, some of us were talking about Magic Mart that used to be right down the road, out of business. You go over to North Johnson City, there's some places that are out of business. You go over to Unicoi County, where I used to pastor, there's places that are out of business. Restaurants we used to eat at, out of business. I got online last night and I, I went to Yahoo and Google and I typed up places in Elizabethan, Tennessee that have went out of business or going out of business. I couldn't find the list, but I know of places that are uh, being hurt by today's economy. There's layoffs happening every day in different companies. Sister Kim was sharing a testimony about uh, where she works, and at one time she's laid off for four years. She's working there now, and the place is doing great. We thank the Lord for that. Where Don works from out state's health lines, there's been some people let go uh, and, and have been laid off. And yeah, they're trying to find another position for them to work in, but there's businesses that are closing down. And I began to think, about, you know, the world may change and the economy may change and things may look dim and things may look bleak and places may shut down and places may go out of business. But I'm thankful this morning that nothing changes heaven. I'm glad that heaven is not going to be shut down. I'm thankful that heaven is not out of business. I'm glad that Jesus is not hurt by the economy or Jesus is not hurt by our circumstances. I'm glad that Jesus is still in business. And I began to think about what the Bible says. And Luke chapter number 2 at verse 49, he says, I must be about my Father's business. And I'm glad that I can report to you on this Sunday morning that Jesus is still in business. And I began to think about what kind of business is he still in. Well, I began to first off think about this passage of Scripture. They lose Jesus. They, they lose Jesus in the crowd. They lost Jesus in the city. It seems that they lost Jesus in the conversation. The country where they abide, it seemed like they lost Jesus. To them at that moment, that time, they lost Jesus in the country. I began to think about that. If we're not careful, you know what? We can be around the wrong crowd and we can lose Jesus in the crowd. We can be talking about the wrong things and lose Jesus in a conversation. We can lose Jesus in our county. We can lose Jesus in our city. We can lose Jesus in our country. But I've got to tell you this morning, if there's one place that I don't want to lose Jesus, I don't want to lose Him in the church. Amen. Amen. If there's ever been a day when we need the Lord and we need His presence and we need His power, it's in 2014. And so I don't want to lose Jesus in any area of my life. I need Him in my life. We need Him in your life. And we need Him in the church. The first point that God gave me is He's still in the chariot business. I came in this morning. I was a little late. And I looked up. My watch was 10 minutes 
behind that cloth. I thought I guess it'd be good to get my watch in tune with that cloth. Maybe I'll get you out on time that way. And so anyways, I, I came in and I began to think about, uh, I, I, I want to share my heart with the Sunday school teachers this morning. Uh, yesterday I was talking with a dear sister at, at, uh, at Dollywood. And I was just sharing my heart with her and I said, you know what, sis, sometimes I find myself getting discouraged. I said, you go and you preach your heart out and you go through, it seems like sometimes we just go through church, we go through the motions, we're in, we're out. And it seems like we, 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 we don't see, I, this is personal, I don't see people being saved like I'd like to see. And I said, sis, I, I get discouraged. I said, but then I look around at the spirit of the church. And I look around the fellowship of the church. And I look around at new people coming in. And I see people joining the church. And I see the church grow, and I said, that's what encourages me. I said, so yeah, I find myself getting discouraged, but then I find myself also encouraged by what God is doing. And then I, I began to talk about how the Lord and other sisters sat down, and we were talking about Sunday school teachers, and, and uh, uh, we were talking about Sister Norm, Norman, and they said, boy, uh, that's a teacher right there, and Alicia's a teacher. And, and uh, then I said, Patsy's class is growing. You look through, uh, if you go where Sister Joanne sits on Sunday morning and you know Norma's class has grown and R.L. and Tommy's class has grown and you look at Alicia's class has grown and you see Patsy eventually you put your list of people are going to be on two pages and that's good things to see and, and I began to think about that and I want to I say that sometimes the Lord he tarries you know now this, this morning our service may end at, at 12 
We see here that even though they lost him in the crowd, even though they lost him in communication, even though they lost him in the city, they found him at the tomb. He was sitting on the stairs and he had been teaching and he had been preaching at the age of 12. And the doctors, the, the scribes, they were just amazed at his teachings, at his knowledge, at his wisdom, and at his understanding of the scriptures. And so we still see God in the temple today. I'm glad that God still meets with his people. And then we can find him in the midst. You know, the Bible tells us in Revelation chapter number 2, when it talks about the seven candlesticks and Jesus being in the midst. And in Revelation chapter number 4, it talks about Jesus being in the midst. I, I, I'm telling you, I'm glad, I'm thankful, and I hope it don't ever change that every time we come to the house of God, I want Jesus to be in the midst. Sister April was sharing with us yesterday about this uh, uh, resident where she works, this patient where she works, wanting to feel God, meeting prayer. And Sister April began to pray and said, well, why don't we pray? And that dear lady looked at April and said, we're two or three together and he's in the midst. Listen, I don't know how many we have that are here this morning, 140, 150, 160, something like that, but how many is glad that when it's just you and somebody else, that Jesus is there. But I can't tell you, Brother Terry, how many times it's just been me and God that is there. I'm glad that, that in the time of trouble. I'm glad in the times of tribulation. I'm glad in the good times and in the bad times I can find Jesus in the midst. Oh, I find Him in the storms of life. In Mark chapter number 6, it says that the, the disciples are on the, on the sea. They're in a storm. And the Bible says that Jesus comes walking to them in the midst of the storm. So that lets me know that I can find Jesus in the midst of my storm. You'll see in Mark chapter number 5 and Luke chapter number 8, it tells about a woman that has an issue of blood. She's sick. In John chapter number 5, you see a man that, that has been lame for 38 years by the pool of Bethesda. And guess what? He's sick in body. You can find at the gate called Beautiful, there's a man that's lame. And he's there begging alms. And, and, but I will tell you that in the midst of healing, in the midst of the move of God, it's just like that man who told Jesus in John 5, he said there's a season where an angel of the Lord comes down and he stirs the water. Well, you know when the water's being stirred, you'll find, you'll find Jesus in the midst. You'll find Jesus in the stirring. And then in Mark 5 and Luke 8, the woman with the issue of the blood, Jesus was in the midst. I'm glad He's in the midst of our storms. And I'm glad He's in the midst of our sickness. But in John chapter number 19, the Bible says that when Jesus was taken to the hill of Golgotha and He was put on the cross, the Bible says that there was a thief on either side and Jesus in the midst. So that tells me that Jesus is in the midst of our suffering. And then the Bible says in John chapter number 20 that when the disciples were discouraged and full of sorrow, that Jesus came and was in the midst. And He said, Peace be unto you. Peace I give unto you. I'm glad that in the midst of our storms, I'm glad in the midst of our sickness, in the midst of our suffering, in the midst of our sorrow, I'm glad, Brother Gary, that I can find the Savior in the midst of everything that I may face. So can you. So he's in the chariot business. And then he's in the trucking business. I think about where Jesus comes to the house of chariots and they said, don't trouble the master. They said, it's no trouble. It's no trouble. I think about, I, 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 I can't multitask at all. If I'm going to make bacon, eggs, and toast, I have to do one thing at a time. I know not to make my eggs first, Sister Lisa, because they're going to get cold before I'm getting my bacon and toast now. So it doesn't bother me to have my toast cold because I'm going to put apple butter or jam on it anyways. So Sister Joanne, I'll make my toast first. And then Sister Lisa, I know it takes my bacon a little longer unless you get the kind that you microwave. And sometimes I'm not patient enough to cook big bacon so I can microwave with kind. The problem with that, Brother Greg, is sometimes I eat all six uh, pieces of paper full of paper. How I many knows what I'm talking about? You open up the box and I say, why not just like with the whole box? So instead of cooking cook three slices, I have 30. <laughs> Especially if you go to Sam's Wholesale and get that big box, you can get 76 pieces of paper. 
Somebody says, well, maybe the patty sweeter and all this. And no, the Whopper's the same. But then uh, it shows people reading the inside of that wrapper and says we're all the same on the inside. That's right. We all are the same on the inside. I mean, there's just one race. Amen? If, if you cut Brother A. May and you cut me, guess what? We're going to bleed the same. He looks the same on the inside as I do on the inside. And you know what? Yeah, we're humans and we've got to love all people, but we don't have to love their sin. And Burger King may, may want to have gay pride day, but Nathan ain't going to have gay pride day. And guess what? I ain't going to eat a walk no more, even though it's one of my favorite hamburgers. You say, preacher, what do you say? Why do you call to speak about sin? Because sin is sin. Right. And we've got to take the stand. Yeah. Listen, Jesus is coming soon. Right now, He's tearing. Now, to the alcoholic, I love the alcoholic, but I don't love the alcohol. Right. To the drug addict, I love the drug addict, but I don't like the drugs. To the person wrapped up in pornography, I hate that sin, but I love the sinner. To a person that is affected with homosexuality, you know what? Say they was born that way. That's impossible. Because what God's been left out of America. But we're still one nation. 
and under God. And I'm thankful for that. I can't, I can't, I can't speak for America. But I can speak for me. And by what I see here this morning, when Brother John saying he's proud to be an American and people start to stand up, guess what? You're proud to be an American. And I guarantee that everybody's proud to wave this flag. And some of you probably even have one in the yard or up on a pole or coming out from the front of your house. Some of you may have one flying on your, on your car. But you know what? How many is not only proud to be an American, but how many is proud to be a child of God? Amen. I'm done with this thought. I, I remember, I told this story about a year ago. I was eating at Nino's. And boy, this guy and his wife, they were not from around here, Sister Kelsey. And I overheard him telling his wife, he said, Why? You all remember this story? He said, Why? They got a monument towards the, for the military and for the soldiers. Boy, he was just giving that down the road. Like, why do they recognize soldiers? Why do they have these memorial walls and stuff like that? And Brother Reed, I can't stand it anymore. I said, the reason that you can walk down this street free and the reason you can eat here and do what you do is because people die for your freedom. Yeah. You know what, though? I wish that I could go back and say, but not only can you be free in America, but I will tell you about somebody that died for you to save your soul from hell and give you liberty in Christ. I, I guess I was just a little bit too aggravated to witness to it. I wanted to go to war, not witness. <laughs> I mean, listen, I'm proud of you. I could live here, yeah, it's got its issues, but I'd rather live here than Afghanistan. I'd rather live here than, than Pakistan or China or any other place. Oh, no, over Russia, I'd rather live in America. Hey, if you, I'm going to just say this right now. If you don't like America, our church will buy you a one-way plane ticket to another country. <laughs>
Maybe you've never been saved. Maybe you've never been to the cross. Maybe you've never come to Jesus. Maybe you've never been washed in the blood. He's still in the tree business. You know what? They took a tree down years ago to put Jesus on. You'll never find him on another tree. You won't find him at a wedding post ever again. Next time he's coming, not as a little old lamb, but he's coming as a lion of the tribe of Jesus. Next time he comes, it's not going to be as a little old yes, baby. He's coming as the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Guess what? He could come back today. Are you ready? Lord, we love you. We thank you, Father, for the patriot, patriotic service, Lord, for the singing. The patriotic melody that Sister Carol played. But Lord, I'm thankful for the melody I feel in my heart this morning. Lord, that you're still in control and you're still in business. And Lord, I pray, Father, that today if there's someone that needs to touch, if there's someone that needs to encourage, if there's somebody that needs to be saved, if there's somebody that needs to be uplifted, if there's somebody that's sick in body, uh, Lord, I don't know what the need is, but I just pray to come. Lord, you're still in the soul saving business. You're still in the healing business. You're still in the supply business. You can supply all our needs according to our riches and glory by the Christ Jesus. Lord, just move in this invitation. We'll love you. Thank you. Praise you. Yes, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand here.